and welcome to this week's Hi-Fi video. And we're looking at a turntable upgrade this week, specifically the turntable's platter, the thing your record sits upon. And the upgrade is, well, I'm looking to damp the platter in this particular video, specifically to add damping materials underneath the platter itself. Now, is this a product or is it a service? Well, both. First and foremost, this is a new service from the UK outfit Sound Deck, the very same company that sells the well-received PM Platter Mat, a mat that has been reviewed on this channel. I'll put a little link up yonder if you'd like to have a look at that. They also sell the DF damping isolation feet, and I also featured those in an earlier buyer's guide, the sort of accessories buyer's guide I published just before Christmas of last year. And again, I'll put a little link up yonder if you want to look at that. Now, before we get into the specifics of the service and talk about costs, a bit of background. So, why do you need to damp your turntable's platter? What does it mean? And how do you go about such a thing? Now, like most things in life, balance is what we seek. Too little of anything is often not good for us. Similarly, too much of something can be equally destructive. Now, that's certainly true for vibration in and around your hi-fi. Now, without vibration, we wouldn't be hearing much music at all. Too much of it, though, can make the vibration itself dominant. It gets in the way, basically. It veils sound quality, the sort of sound quality you're looking for from your hi-fi. Now, you can hear this yourself. If you happen to walk into an empty room and you clap your hands with sound bouncing off all of the walls, the ceiling and the floor, the resultant echoes can be, well, pretty horrific in pure sound terms. Now, I had to damp this particular room, for example, before I could use it to listen to my hi-fi and also my work. The same issues and problems occur all over your hi-fi components. Each and every one of them suffers in some terms and to some extent from vibration. Your turntable, of course, is no exception to that. Hence, controlling vibration should be an active part of building and constructing your hi-fi. Now, this is why ancillaries and accessories are so important. To control destructive forces like vibration, well, this is where turntable upgrades are generally seen as a good thing. Now, upgrades, generally speaking, are those things that manufacturers could not implement because the initial build budget couldn't stand it. If you want it, therefore, it's up to you to sort it out. This is why I go on and on and on about things like upgrading your power cables and your phono cables and your isolation feet and the platter mat and the cartridge and, well, now, well, enhancing the platter itself. Now, not every single platter on the market will need such attention. Both of the turntables I've recently reviewed, Projects Evo and W Pro, well, they've already received that sort of attention, so they're fine. Both include sound-enhancing materials to dampen those destructive vibrations, and that's one reason why they sound so good. But what if you lift the platter on your turntable and you flip it upside down and you suddenly realize there's no damping at all? So what you're looking at, quite possibly, is a bare piece of stamped aluminium. What can you do then? Well, you can upgrade to a platter mat. Now, that will do a great job and is highly recommended. And I've talked about platter mats Again, on this channel, and once more, I'll put a link and possibly two up yonder for you to have a look at the sort of thing I'm talking about here. 
Now, platter mats are great at damping the actual platter, but it can't do it all. It goes so far and, well, then it stops. Look, for example, at the turntable designs I've already mentioned. There's examples of what I'm going on about here. Both include platter damping. I'm talking about the W Pro and the Evo. Both include platter damping and also a decent platter mat. You need attention from both sides of the platter to cover all bases above and below. So if your platter needs damping, what do you do? Well, you can seek out sorbethane sheets. You can buy this kind of stuff on eBay. Sheets of different sizes, different shapes, and different prices. Now, I've yet to fully test this material, so I don't really know how it performs underneath a platter at any rate. Now, I've seen it for sale on the likes of eBay at different size sheets with thicknesses ranging from one millimeter up to ooh, around four millimeters, which is pretty darn thick. I don't know how effective it might be or if the relatively broad thicknesses of some of those sheets might change the performance of the platter, possibly in a negative way. I really don't know. It's certainly an option and it's one worth investigating and it is on my list to look into further. Now the thing is, when you buy a sorbethane sheet, you will need to cut the sorbethane sheet to shape yourself. Now, I don't know how easy or difficult that may be. I've yet to get to that point. But as you've already guessed, there is an alternative to sorbethane and it's this new service from Soundeck. Now, in case you're unaware, Soundeck is the hi-fi arm of the heavy industry company called Sound Damped Steel. Now, Sound Damped Steel supply sound damping materials for well, pretty major installations. I'm talking about things like underground railways, enormous complex gas pipelines, large factories, that kind of thing. This, I have to tell you, is a company who apparently shipped steel to China, not from it as everybody else does. And that happened in the week I was recording this video. And that's an achievement in itself nowadays. Now, the reason the company is into hi-fi at all, and it does seem a little odd on the face of this, as I say, this is a heavy industry kind of company. The main reason is because the owner, a guy from Newcastle named Les Thompson, hello Les, is a hi-fi fan. So Soundeck, the hi-fi arm of the company, well, it's his pet project, basically. Now, that's obviously to our benefit. Now, the material to damp your platter is pretty thin. It's made of damped steel and it's one millimeter thick. And it uses the same sort of damped steel approach as the PM platter mat and the isolation feet I've already mentioned. Well, it's a material the company knows best after all. So, how does this service actually work? Well. In short, the idea is that you tell Soundeck what platter you have and they ship a bespoke bag of parts to fit your platter. Then you stick the parts underneath the platter and you're good to go. That's the general idea. Okay, so that's the generalities. How does this thing work in actual practice? Well, to begin, you will need to email Soundeck. You need to tell them what turntable you have, and you need to send an image of the underside of the platter to them as well. So you would attach that image to your email. In that way, Soundeck will know what space needs to be covered once they can see underneath your platter, once they have the image that you've sent. What Soundeck will then do is to put that underside pattern into some CAD software, and then they will use that CAD software to program a CNC machine. That program will give the CNC machine unique cutting instructions for your platter. And how much does this cost, the service and the parts and everything else? Well, Soundeck will ask for 30 pounds plus postage. Now, that postage 
may vary depending on the size of the required pieces, depending on your own platter. You will then receive a pack of shaped sound damped steel pieces that you can then stick to the underside of your platter. Now the pieces are sticky on one side and you'll need to peel off a piece of protective coating before you fit. Now when you receive your pieces, don't throw this protective layer off with gay abandon. Make sure you know where each piece will fit. Do a dry run. Actually, no, do several dry runs. I say that because I want you to be sure where these things are going. Then peel off the coating and carefully, carefully fit each piece. Then press down and evenly press across each piece to secure. Now, I'm adding a few of these caveats because the adhesive that Sound Death use, well, it's strong. Uh, so I'd recommend using lots of practice before you commit. Resighting will not be an option. Well, it possibly can be, but it's going to be tough. Basically, when this adhesive sticks, it sticks. Now, to help you in terms of fitting, Sound Deck will take that image you sent earlier and they'll make a little template plan for you, marking the areas on your photo where the pieces need to fit. So you'll see where these shaped pieces need to go you'll have, as it were, a set of bespoke plans just for your platter. Now that's all very well and good, but some of you might wonder if it's possible just to send your platter to Sound Deck and let them sort the fitting themselves. Because some of you might think, well, I just don't need the hassle, actually. Now that's a possibility, but the postage, especially for these days, would be too high, possibly an additional £30 or more, because don't forget, you're shipping this rather large and possibly rather heavy platter to them. Then they're fitting all the bits, which then makes the platter heavier. And then they're shipping the whole thing back to you. And then there's the size of the packaging itself. It's going to cost a fair bit. Now that would make the whole concept, well, unviable for you and also possibly Sound Deck. Hence, this is the best and most cost effective way of doing things. The good thing about Sound Deck is that they're happy to have a conversation. So if you have additional questions, if you have worries, if you have concerns, well, you can email the company and they'll help you out as much as possible. There are human beings on the other end. Now, there's one additional caveat in all of this. It's the imponderable. And it may cause a problem. Not all platter undersides are smooth and uniform. Some arrive with, well, oddly shaped knobbly bits sticking up in weird places. So now, any damping is better than none at all. You don't have to have 100% of the platter covered to have an effect. The more the better, of course, but like I say, any damping is better than none at all. The problem is, though, the more complex the underside of the platter, the more work and effort that's needed to fill a complex platter area and the less viable it becomes for Sound Deck. So there's a balance here. Now, if you want your platter to be damped by Sound Deck, but you think your platter might be an issue, then once again, please have a chat with Sound Deck. Attach an image via email, talk about your concerns, see what they say. Sound Deck might say that your platter is unsuitable, or you might be able to come to some arrangement. If you're up for the damping service, even if your platter looks, well, a little busy underneath there, it's still worth asking the question. Now, most platters should be fine. I grabbed two platters for this test. I took a platter off a of Lenko L3808 and another one from my Audio-Technica 120X. Actually, both turntables use the same platter, so there's a bit of trivia for you. Nevertheless, I tested the turntables with and without damping just to hear any possible beneficial effects. Now, before we get to those before and after sound tests in some detail, let me give you an idea what an undamped platter actually sounds like compared to a platter which has been damped.
Okay, I have a platter here from a Lenko L3808 or a 120X, as you now know. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this little metal gizmo y crafty thing through the center so it runs thus. And I'm going to give it a tap. And I'm going to put this next to my microphone. And you're going to hear the ringing or lack of ringing just to see how much vibration this thing sucks up or otherwise. So what I will do, I will strike the platter so it should ring, I don't know how long, and uh, I will put the microphone right next to the platter so you can hear it properly. Now I would advise you to lower the volume on your amplifier, headphones, TV, whatever, and I would advise you to do that now, um, just in case the sound is a bit overwhelming, because it may very well be. For those of a meditative nature, you might want to chant the odd ohm as this occurs. So, a little bit of relaxation, hopefully. What I'm going to do, I'm going to keep the microphone around and about the center of the platter until it finishes. I'm going to stick my ear to it. My ear might be a little bit more sensitive than the microphone and all the YouTube compression that gets between me and you. So I might be able to hear a little bit more than you can. But um, let's see what happens anyway. Okay, here we go. Hope you can hear this. Sounds pretty loud, hey? Still going. As I'm sure you all were. I can still hear it. Still happening. Uh, I've hit this with my finger. Not anything metallic, which would have been even more, more ringing. I can still hear it. This is just my finger, and that wasn't a great strike. Oops, there's my glasses. It's still ringing. And gone, I would say. So I didn't time that, but it's quite a long time. <laughs> Let's try the damped version. So I'll be back in a second. Now this is what I'm talking about. This is one of the pieces which you would receive if you wanted to damp your own turntable. Now this is just a sample piece. The actual pieces will depend on the shape of the underneath of your turntable platter. So this is just an example, but you can see on that side, which is white, that's the actual steel. And on this side, which is obviously colored a sort of brownie color, that's the protective peel off paper bit. And I've peeled back some of the adhesive. You can see some of the shiny steel underneath that's actually coated with pretty strong adhesive. So it's that side that fits underneath the actual platter. Now this is the undamped platter for the Audio-Technica 120X and Lenko L3808. It's all bare and, well, just basic aluminium, as you can see. And I will show you the damped version. Look around here, you will probably see the lip where the damped steel sheets are fitted. You might and here it is. Can you see the difference in shine? You can also see around here the lip of one of those steel plates. There's another lip here. You can see a bit of a, a bit of a, if I move it there, I'm trying to get the reflection, you can see the difference in reflection between the steel here and the platter aluminium. So here, fortunately, we have, well, it's a pretty simple covering. We've just got two large pieces here and here. So let's give this one a test. And we're back with my roaming microphone and I apologize for the quality of my voice if this is too far away or too close. Again, just be careful with the loudness of your device. Just keep your hands ready on the volume. I don't want to cause any deafness here. So let me get my little dibbler dobbler gizmo and the damped platter. So it's moving freely again as I'm sure you can see. So I'll hit the platter, put the microphone next to the platter and we'll see what we can hear or we'll hear what we can hear. Here we go. Not a lot, hey. I can't hear anything. There we go. Freely moving here. Well, I think
think you can hear the difference. That's what a damped platter should sound like. Not bad, eh? Well, I'm impressed. I don't know about you. So that's, oh, sorry. So that's £30 plus postage. Before we go, I may have a couple of other platters just to give this a bit of context. Now, this is a platter from a Project Evo. This is actually made from sound damped steel. I'm not sure if Project went to Sound Deck for this or if they went to another supplier, but this feels pretty heavy. And underneath, there's a ring of TPE damping. Just there, just along, just along the rim there. Here. I'll bring it to camera, you can have a closer look. So here's the underneath of the Project Evo platter. It's a pretty darned heavy steel platter. You can see the matte finish here. And around the periphery here is a piece of TPE, which is rather squishy. If you, you can press it in and it just gives and um, yeah, that adds a little bit more damping to that particular platter. Let's give it a quick sound test. Okay, I've got my roaming mic and the actual platter and my little metal spiky thing. I'll just uh, set it all up for you. So there's my platter and it's on my metal spiky thing. On oh, my metal spiky thing and it's freely moving as, <laughs> as you can see. Whoa, okay, so, um, <laughs> right, so we're all set up and there's the platter on my metal spiky thing. Whoop, okay, here we go. I'll give this a whack and see what happens. Now, I don't know about you, but I thought the sound deck damped platter, the Lenko 120X platter, I thought the damped platter there was more effective than this one. This is a very nicely damped platter, don't get me wrong, and oh, it's heavy. This is very good, don't get me wrong. This is a very nicely damped turntable platter. But I felt that these sound deck sheets were more effective, I think. I don't know about you. One more time, have a little listen. It's mostly there, just just a tiny little bit left, but it's mostly gone, the vibration. I've got one more platter and then we'll move on to the sound tests. This is a platter from an Audio Technica 140. Okay, this is the platter from a Audio Technica 140. You can see it has a larger spindle hole in the center here. And if we flip it over, now you can see this rather matte covering. This is a sort of rubberized material that Audio Technica has placed underneath this platter. So this has been damped. Yes, well, we will test it and find out, but it looks like the job has been done on this one. If I, I can kind of, with my nail, I can kind of press down on it. It's a sort of rubberized substance. And like I say, you can see, so now let me bring this, I don't know if it'll, go in focus still. Now, if I bring it to camera, you can sort of see the lip where the metal joins this rubberized area. Okay, I'm back with my microphone and the platter for the Audio Technica 140, which appears to have already been damped. And uh, let's give this one a go. Okay, we're ready. Let's give this one a thump. Oh dear. and it's still ringing. I can st still hear it ringing. Still, and, and so gone. The moral of this story is that just because you've placed a covering underneath your turntable's platter, well, it doesn't mean that the damping job has been done. It really depends on the type of material that you're using. Looking up close, well, this material looks really effective. It looks quite expensive and looks like it'll do 
a darn good job. But as we've just heard, it doesn't. And that's the problem, isn't it? You've really got to be careful what material you use to do your damping. Welcome back to the sound quality tests for the Sound Deck damping service. Now, to begin, I grabbed an album called Electric Light Orchestra Showdown. This is on the Masters of Rock imprint from EMI, and it's a bit of a compilation of ELO's early works. I played First Movement, Jumping Biz, which is an early instrumental that's rather useful for testing because it combines... Well, what have you got? Spanish guitar, there's some drums and bass. There's also violins and cellos to offer a rather complex sonic arrangement. So I tested my reference Lenko L3808 with and without damping and heard a difference in a few areas. The largest difference was in the bass. Before the damping, the bass sounded a bit soggy, lacking in form and structure. With the damping, the bass tightened up. Now drums were brisk and formed. There was a sense of focus. The sense of focus was good here. The cellos also were noticeable in their newly formed precision, which helped their agility. Earlier they sounded like, well, they just got out of bed basically. Now with the damping in place, the cellos appeared to be nimble now. More than anything, the lower frequencies offered more space across the soundstage. The improved focus meant that there was more space in between actual instruments. You could hear the beginnings and the endings of each instrument. Before the damping, the bass sounded like a solid block of tone. There was no real definition. The Spanish guitar before the damping sounded positively slovenly, as if it didn't care and couldn't really be bothered. With the damping, it sounded like it had a good night's sleep, was full of energy and raring to go. Strings were plucked with a new sense of vigour. Now, because the Audio-Technica 120X uses the same platter, I decided to test the pre and post damping effects on this turntable as well, partly because it uses an improved elliptical stylus. The Lenko uses an inferior conical version, but also because the 120X, well, just sounds generally better than the Lenko. So I wondered if the damping effect might be even more pronounced on such a turntable design. And yes, once again, the improvements were there and they started once more in the bass regions. Bass was once more rather lively. From a sleepy and rather drowsy state before damping, the actual damped turntable offered more energetic and exciting translation of the music. The lower frequencies really tightened up in terms of focus. Thing is, when that happened, the bass no longer bled along its outer edges in those fringe areas. Those fringy bits were now gone because there was more solidity, there was more precision. Now the 120X is overall a superior design to the earlier Lenko and that allowed the damping upgrade to enhance the sonics still further. I used a VM95E cartridge on my 120X. That offered a greater dynamic reach, which meant that more detail was available to hone and to tone. More information was available to exploit the new found space. The sound was tonally more realistic, especially in that bass region. Overall, there was a better balance between the bass, the mids and the treble. Now, both of these turntables benefited from the platter damping service. I have no doubts that other turntable designs will appreciate the same source of attention. So how should I conclude the performance from the Soundeck Platter Damping Service?
Well, firstly, let me temper your expectations. Expect improvements, but don't get carried away here. This is an upgrade, and it works like an upgrade. It works, but it's not like buying a brand new turntable. It's a step in the right direction towards your Sonic Nirvana. So this sort of upgrade is supposed to be used in conjunction with other upgrades to gradually push up the sound quality of your turntable ever higher. So for example, let's say the sonic improvement of buying a brand new expensive turntable is say this much. The improvement of damping your turntable will be that much, say. But then if you add a platter mat on top of that, a good one, then you've got a bit more. And then if you add some decent isolation feet under the plinth, well, it goes a bit further. And if you upgrade your cartridge, well, it goes a bit further. As you see, it's a cumulative effect, but the platter damping is an important effect, and it's part of that team of upgrades. The Sound Deck Platter Damping Service offers ground-up improvements in sonic performance. Literally, the damping hits the bass first and foremost. Well, it does with these sound damped steel pieces. At any rate, they tighten the bass, giving it weight, but also speed and punch. That extra focus gives the mid range and the treble more room to maneuver, so the mids offer a similar sense of sparkle. In short, the music sounds new. It sounds fresh out of the can, full of dynamism. This upgrade should be seen as an important part of general turntable upgrades alongside other upgrade tasks which I've already mentioned like the upgrading your cartridge, your platter mat, isolation feet and the like. For the price, the Sound Deck Platter Damping Service is definitely worth the time, effort and money. And I'm done. Thank you very much for staying with me to the end of this video. And thank you very much for your support. And if I could ask for just a touch more, if that'd be okay, down there somewhere, if you could possibly just click on the like, and if you haven't done so already, the subscribe buttons. Also down below, please check out the chapter headings to allow you to navigate around this video. And there's other links down there too, including social media links. There's a link to my Facebook group, which you're welcome to join. There's also my website, which has a host of material on there you won't see on this channel, folks. And if I could ask you to consider supporting me on Patreon, please, it keeps this channel alive. And I want to also thank my patrons who are helping me do just that. Thank you very much indeed. There are some exclusive videos, but also some text-based features buyers guides and so on. Now I will be back on Tuesday for Tuneful Tuesday and I hope you can join me then. I think there's another music magazine on the way so please join me then. We've got some book reviews and CD reviews, vinyl news, lots of goodies basically. Anyway I hope you join me because I'd like to have your company. Until that time folks, bye bye for now.